perspective. It's pretty comfortable. Back to you, John and Barbara. I think I'll just hang around here a little while. On those rare days off, Buck quarterback Steve DeBerg enjoys the solitude of sailing his Hobie cat with three-year-old son, Drew. Hey, Steve. Look like you're ready for a sail? Yeah, it does look nice. Good weather? Yeah. Great. Ready to go? How about it? That's a great way to relax. You can't take the ski boat out during the season because, uh, you know, the injury thing. So uh, I get into the sailing and there's no injury factor here. So um, it's basically just relaxing and enjoying it. Uh, I kind of got into it in San Francisco. Uh, living in San Francisco, you're around so many people. And um, I had a hard time getting away from people and enjoying myself, relaxing without always bumping into somebody that uh, wanted to talk football and things. And I found that I could go sailing and you know, nobody could get to me. And it was very relaxing and very enjoyable. I've been doing it ever since. You and your family enjoy doing this together? Yeah, yeah, it's a great family thing to do. And, um, you know, a lot of times we come out here and bring our lunch and, and uh, soft drinks and, and uh, on a light day, uh, the whole family comes, the dog comes, everybody comes, you yeah. know. How old is Drew? Is he a pretty big help on his boat yet? Yeah, Drew's three years old and he's my first mate and front jib man and knows what's going on. <laughs> On Sundays, Buck linebacker Scott Brantley makes a living hunting quarterbacks. On his days off, Scott hunts other things, wild turkey and deer, but not for the obvious reasons. Well, it's, uh, it's a relaxing effect. More than anything else, it's a, it's a chance to, to just get away, um, away from reporters, away from uh, critics, and, and away from uh, people that, that, you know, wonder if you're if you're human or not you know they, they think football players are a different breed of people which they are but yet they're human also and uh, and I enjoy it. it it's a chance for me to to just get away and to and to clear my mind and and do some heavy thinking can you spend a whole day out here not see anything and still be happy oh that's for sure Randy because uh, the killing aspect is and what I'm talking about it's just the getting away and and learning a lot more about the outdoors something that's very precious to me because it's a it's kind of a dying type of thing in the state of Florida Brantley's not conservative on the playing field but on this field he is a conservationist one thing Brantley can't wait for is open season on bears Chicago variety it starts a week from Sunday at Tampa Stadium. On a Sunday afternoon. I didn't really realize when I bought the car that it would be anything of a, uh, a media story at all. And But it's been kind of fun that way and people have been interested in it. I've got a lot of comments about driving this car. There's people that see the car, I think, that recognize me because of the car, <laughs> rather than me because of football, which I'm not sure if it's good or bad. But uh, it really isn't that uh, flashy, I don't think. I think it's kind of classic in a lot of ways. Steve, some people say uh, you are what you drive. Do you <laughs> feel like this car is kind of an extension of your personality? In well, I hope I'm a little faster than this uh, Cadillac. <laughs> but uh, I think that there's some images that I kind of uh, you know, just feel good about as far as putting the top down and riding a little bit and turning the music on and enjoying uh, the outdoors and so forth. And uh, especially in, in this climate, it's a lot easier to do. And so it's a lot of fun. But uh, I guess, yeah, you know, I'm not that old yet, maybe, but uh, I ride good, I guess. How about shifting into that German Shepherd for us? It all started here on the Bucks practice field when linebacker Irvin Randall thought he'd liven up the place a little bit. Sometimes I'll be standing next to a guy and you know it's hot and I'll go, and the guy will go, man, what's wrong with that guy? And the more I've been doing it, the better it's been getting, so I just kind of bark all the time. This Friday night, could the Miami Dolphins hear mighty underdog across the line of scrimmage? I, you know, I think the thing would be so funny about it that a lineman would almost look at it and go, what the heck's going on over here? Have you had your shots? No. <laughs> I, I hope I don't have to bite anybody. I just hope I don't have to bite anybody. Leroy Selman's exceptional strength and blazing speed have caused coaches to alter game plans. 
Assuming I'm the offensive tackle, Leroy, how about sharing some techniques with us? First of all, if you're an offensive tackle, I want to grab you right like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over. No. I said the wrong thing there, <laughs> No. Uh, what would determine my alignment would be the defense that we have called predominantly. Sometimes I line up on a shade to the outside shoulder of the offensive tackle, and other times I line uh, directly head up with them and reading on the move. And then I will try to assume a real comfortable defensive position, one where I try to keep my feet fairly square to my shoulders and I can put my hand down. I feel comfortable enough to be able to move either way, either with my right or my left foot. And uh, the main thing is in my position, I want to be able to keep my head up to where I can see the tackle, the offensive guard, and uh, the backfield, if I can, and I, my peripheral vision, as well as being able to feel the tight end if he's lined up to my side. The primary people that I'm looking at is the tackle and the guard, because in most cases, they'll tell you what the play is going to be, like whether it's coming at you or whether it's going away from you. How many times have you seen it this season? The outcome of the game hinging on the nerves of steel of the Bucks place kicker. It takes a special breed to shut out and isolate himself from the cheers of the crowd and the jeers of the opponent. One of the most prolific legs in the National Football Conference belongs to Buccaneer place kicker Billy Capice. And I'm going to ask Billy if he'll share some of his thoughts with us on his kicking techniques today. When I'm setting up right before the ball is snapped, I'm just thinking, follow through and going straight through the ball and then once it's snapped everything is uh, totally silent I don't think about anything I, I just do what I, I know what to you know know how to do and everything's blank how do you like the ball placed for you I like the ball uh, straight up and, and a, a little tilt towards Larry and that, that's how I like it that compensates for a hook which uh, all soccer style kickers will get if the ball is directly straight up. Without even looking up, do you know pretty much as soon as you've hit the ball whether or not it's going to be true? I, I definitely do. You know right when you kick the ball, you can you can tell. How do you block out all of the distractions? So. I've been kicking you know, in front of big crowds now for, this is my sixth year, four years in college. They have big crowds there too, and of course the pros. And it's just something I'm able to deal with, and I'm just able to block them out and just worry about kicking the ball instead of everything going around. Maybe there's a, you know, a few ticks left on the clock or, or an overtime. When, a, when you watch the ball go through, it's just a, a great feeling. A wet jet is an offshoot of the jet ski, but with one major difference, as you can see, on a wet jet, you can sit on it. This is Ray Hempstead of Barney Cycles, and Ray, uh, what power is this thing? This has a 360cc liquid-cooled twin engine. How fast am I going to be going out there? About 40. 40 miles an hour. I'll tell you what, I'm no Chuck Yeager, but uh, let's crank it up here and give it a shot. It's not dangerous in any way, shape, or form, and uh, it's just a matter of getting a little bit used to taking off on it. And once you're moving at all, you can sit on it just as normally as if you were in a sports car. It turns exceedingly quick, and uh, it has a quick disconnect in case you should fall off. It just disconnects and stops dead in the water. And uh, it's got padded seat and a and, uh, padded uh, steering wheel. It's got a quick trigger release, so if you should let go of the steering wheel, it you know, the throttles right down. It won't keep on going. They're a U.S.-made product, which, is, again, in itself is a little unusual. The Japanese dominate this type of thing. There's several models, but you can strike an average of about $3,500. There are uh, two basic rules to race walking. One of them is that one foot must remain in contact with the ground at all times, and the other is that as your leg passes over the ground, your knee must be in a locked position, which gives you a wiggle. I'm just out here for the uh, cardiovascular part of it, just to keep the heart, heart uh, pumping along. What pace do you race walk, Bill? My fastest mile is a nine minute, 10, uh, 10 second mile, and I walk at uh, roughly 10 minute miles. A lot of people don't like it because, as you say, a lot of hecklers are out there and you, you do catch uh, a lot of abuse while you're, uh, while you're out walking, but uh, I enjoy it a lot more. There's uh, not as much uh, abuse to the knees, and uh, I hurt my knees uh, a few years ago and got into race walking, and it's, it's a lot, lot better for me. 
My form needs a lot of work, but let me tell you something. This requires a lot more exertion than jogging. For information on the Bay Area Race Walkers Club, call Gordon Hill at 576-0604. Some of this area's most rewarding bass fishing is done on Lake Seminole. If you're new at this, I suggest you consider a guide. Veteran Jim Bench and I headed out from the dock at Bass Fishing Heaven for one of his favorite spots. Well, I've just been on this lake for so many years, I know where they're all at. And uh, I try one spot for a while, and if it don't do any good, I just go to another one. And if I catch them where they're hitting, I just fish it out. Jim, what type of bait have you found best to use for bass? It, it depends on the lake, but on this particular lake, Lake Seminole, plastic worms, I find, are the best for flipping in the weeds. And uh, certain times of the year, spinner baits out away from the weeds when the hydrilla's up along the seawalls and stuff around the lake. I catch quite a few on spinner baits. Jim, what technique do you find works best? Again, speaking of this lake, flipping in the, in the cattails. You just, uh, you don't have to cast, you just get close to the cattails and kind of hold your rod and flip the worm over in the little pockets or the little holes in between the cattails and bounce it up a few times. Nothing grabbed it, just moved to another one. If he's a small one, I have jerked him 10 feet up in the air and over the boat. But if he's a pretty good size one, especially back in the cattails, when you set the hook, if you can't get him turned around, you've lost him because he's going on back through. So you're in for quite a battle. If he's safe, he's over four or five pounds. Pretty good battle. Jim says the best time to fish for your dinner is in the dinner. early morning hours when the water is still cool. Almost two million rowing machines were sold last year. That's about double the amount sold in 1984. Physician and Sports Magazine reports that swimming and cross-country skiing give you the best overall workout, but that a rowing machine is an excellent way of keeping fit. The rowing machine is more strenuous than most forms of exercise because there are more muscle groups involved. But because there are more muscle groups involved, the workout is spread out evenly over your whole body. The areas of the body that would benefit primarily would be the abdominals, legs, um, spina, spinal area, uh, muscles in the upper back, aiding in posture and stress reduction, and the arms. 20 minutes on a rower is more beneficial than 20 minutes on an exercise bike uh, or just about any other exercise you can do, running, bicycling. The American Heart Association recommends an aerobic workout as 12 to 15 minutes in your target heart zone, and we have a formula for figuring that target heart zone based on your age. If used properly, anyone can use a rowing machine uh, unless uh, their doctor recommends against it. A quality rowing machine would range from 250 to around $400. For a guy who gets nervous just driving on 19, this Media Challenge autocross was an experience. We were checked out in a Mercur XR4Ti, a standard production car. The course was set up in a shopping center parking lot. Then it was time to try and maneuver this pylon motocross course, and we only got one shot. For the average person, uh, a solo one situation or an autocross that's set up in a mall parking lot like this anywhere in the United States by the uh, Sports Car Club of America is a good situation and a good opportunity for them to get a little instruction on how to drive turns quickly and how not to let the car get out of control and how not to brake and, and slam into something when you in fact could have driven around it or you could have controlled the car completely. So I think it's real important that, that uh, the SECA get the message out that these things are available to the public and that the public come and give themselves a, a little fun day and a, and a little good uh, experience in driving. When it's over, you've had a pretty good test of your driving skills and reaction time. My lap time was good for fourth among media types. Scott, you've seen my racing abilities. If anybody gets sick this weekend, uh, do you think I'll get a call? Well, I don't know. You could. Let's say you had a couple of exciting moments out there, and I think, uh, you know, a couple more laps, I think you'll have it. If it's been a while since you bowled, you may be shocked at what you discover inside today's modern bowling centers. The equipment is high tech. And Kevin Krause, how are you attempting to attract entire families these days? Well, Randy, we've done several things, including the addition of the AS80 automatic scores, which compute your ball as it goes through the pins, computes the amount of pins you knock down, brings it up to the automatic score, and puts your score right into the console there allows the family to have their time free to interact and talk with each other and enjoy each other's company and make it a social event as opposed to something that's real serious. And we even have the ability at the end of the night to take those scores from the console into our computer room and tell your team 
what place it's in three hours after the league is over. Kevin, do you offer any instructions to new bowlers? We certainly do, Randy. We have Learn to Bowl instruction, which involves either five or ten week programs. We usually run them after the first of the year and in the summertime, which uh, allows a person to come in, get instruction for five weeks, purchase a bowling, uh, get a bowling ball with that instruction, and personalized instructions from people that are certified. What would it cost a family of four to come out and say roll three games? Basically, if a family for four came in and they bowled three games each, you, you would be in the ballpark of $15 to $18, and that would be for two hours of entertainment for a whole family. Welcome to this week's edition of the Steve Spurrier Show. Here's Coach Spurrier and Channel 44 Sports Director, Randy Scott. I think it's safe to say that over the past three years, Bandits fans have enjoyed a very special relationship with this team, the players and the coaches, and it's really a tribute to you, Steve, and your, and your organization. It's really been a class uh, outfit, and I've really enjoyed working with you folks. Any well, final thoughts you. from you? Well, I, I don't really think it's final yet. I'm, I'm, we're not closing up our office or anything yet, Randy. There, there's a good chance that uh, something may happen. This team stays together. Well, let's hope so. Good luck to you guys. Okay. Thanks very much, and we have prepared a... Final look at the uh, Bandits' past three years under the uh, coaching of Coach Steve Spurrier. Stay with us, and uh, I think you'll enjoy this. Stadium. 2-1 pitch from Schaus in the left center. There it is. Rose has eclipsed Cobb. That's number four 
4,192. the second round of the NIT. Tonight on Channel 44, the South Florida Bulls battle the Louisville Cardinals for the right to try and advance toward the tournament finals at Madison Square Garden. Good evening, everyone. This is Randy Scott along with Pistol Pete Maravich here at Freedom Hall. Set to bring you the Bulls and the Louisville Cardinals tonight. It's their first meeting ever. We're in the second round of the NIT. Pete, last Thursday night, as you know, the Bulls manhandled Wake Forest 77 to 66 in the first round. However, tonight at round two, they're on the road in a hostile arena, and Louisville has the longest streak of winning seasons going in the nation, 40 straight years. That streak is on the line for the Cardinals tonight. It's an important game for them as well. Well, it means a lot to them. Uh, uh, you know, the one thing they can't do is overlook South Florida, and I don't think they know that much about them. Huh? Here's a steal. Cardinals Chris West comes up with it. In the corner to Jetter. Off the glass, no good. Loose ball, Curtis Kitchen. The Bulls center on the wing to Bradley. Takes it all the way, and it drops through. And so far, Pete, the confidence they displayed against Wake Forest has certainly carried over into this opening half of tonight's game here in Louisville. They're playing with tremendous poise. I, I, I'm just, it's just amazing how well they're playing right now under all the adversity they are under. There's Patterson. Bombs away. Kuda with 10 points. Kuda right now is playing unconscious, really. I, I don't even know if he knows how good he's playing. But he Hello, everyone, from Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado, where tonight the Tampa Bay Bandits tackle the Denver Gold in their third road game of the season, a game matching up two division leaders in this sixth week. This is Randy Scott along with Rocky Blyer and Richard Trapp set to bring you Bandit Ball from Denver tonight. Rocky, I know you've seen the Bandits in action before this season. Steve Spurrier's offense, I guess you could say predictably unpredictable, but they're a little thin at running back tonight. Uh, that they are. You know, they only brought three running backs uh, to this game out here in Denver, so that might give you some indication of what they're going to do. They might put that ball up in the air. Also, another indication is the fact that the Denver Goals defense is the number one ranked defense in the league against the rush. But knowing Bandit Ball and the way Steve Spurrier coaches, you never know what's going to happen, but it's going to be an exciting game. Well, the Bandits, of course, trying to bounce back tonight from that 42-3 shellacking at the hands of the Chicago Blitz a week ago tonight. Back deep to receive is Lonel Fee. He was third in the nation when he played it for the Houston Cougars, averaging 24.4 yards per kick return. He's a good one. And we're set for the opening kickoff at Mile High Stadium. Beautiful night for this USFL encounter between these two division leaders. And position with a deep kick. B will take it at the one. Ends it out. Tries to cut back over the five yard line, and he is drilled at around the eight yard line. Good special teams coverage by the Bandits. Quickly down there, Alvin Bailey. 
along with Leon Williams. So the goal will start with their backs to the wall at their own nine yard line. First down. The quarterback is Kenny Johnson. One of his claims to fame is that Kenny has played in four professional football leagues. The NFL, the CFL, the WFL, and now, of course, the USFL. Johnson has been extremely sharp since he got the starting call from Coach Red Miller in their third game of the season. They are undefeated with Johnson at quarterback. The running backs are Bo Matthews and Harry Sidney. Sidney, the big workhorse of this team. Sidney on the call, and he's going to be thrown for a loss. Good pursuit that time, Rocky, by the right side of that Bandit's defensive line. Well, you know, as I said before, uh, Randy, you better expect to run on that uh, on the first down. Of course, uh, Tampa Bay was up there. Uh, terrific pursuit. That's what's going to take that in type of intensity for Tampa Bay to shut down the uh, Denver Gold uh, running game. Take a look at the Denver offensive backfield. Sidney and Matthews, the running backs. And here's the offensive line. Rogers, Hyde, Davis, Hassauer, and Hoppick. As they break the huddle and come up to the line of scrimmage. Loss of two, second down, and 12 for the goal. Now a split backfield. Good crowd on hand, and they're still coming in. Here's the toss to Bo Matthews, the big fullback. Matthews breaks out over the 10 and is dropped at around the 14-yard line by Merv Crooker, inside linebacker, who is starting for the injured Kelly Kirschbaum tonight. You know, as we watch this replay, watch uh, the number 65 come out here, Hyde put a great black, well, it was 72 actually, uh, to help uh, open that hole, but it was the inside pursuit of the linebackers that uh, did not allow him to get that gain. They are at the nines at the back of the original line of scrimmage, and it is a third and ten. Once again, a split backfield. Howard Balazs, one of the wide receivers, along with Lon L. Fee. Johnson, pass is dropped. Intended for Harry Sidney at about the 15-yard line, and Sidney could not find the handle. So the Bandits will get their hands on the ball. Coming on to punt for the Denver goal will be Steve Gortz. Good crowd on hand tonight for a USFL showdown at Rocky, only the sixth game of the season, but you could really call this a pretty pivotal game for both of these teams since they're sitting on top of their division, but with narrow leads, respectively. Gortz in the punt. Gortz beat out some pretty stiff competition here with the Broncos cap. Fellows like uh, NFL veteran Rick Partridge, one of them, back deep to receive for the Tampa Bay Bandits is Willie Gillespie. By the way, Gillespie getting a starting call tonight over Eric Trevillian. And we're going to have, should have a flag on that. Gillespie certainly interfered with before he had any chance to field the ball. And finally, the flag, which was a little slow in coming, is dropped. Take a look. Now, Gillespie never gets near it. He's taken out of the play quickly by James. That's Victor James, who was a wide receiver for the Denver goal. So the Bandits are really going to have great field position when they run their first offensive series here, Rocky. Well, I think Victor James got a little carried away with uh, the intensity of this game. But the one thing the young man has to understand is he got to give that uh, receiver or punt returner the chance to uh, catch that ball. He didn't there, got a penalty. Bad time. Gives him good field position. Well, bandit coach Steve Spurrier did some major surgery on his offensive line this week following the loss to Chicago. At left guard, Bill Winters will start tonight. He's their backup on both sides. First down. Steve Patel, who started there last week, was waived on Thursday. And veteran Ron Michalojak, former All-American from the University of Tampa, gets the starting call at right tackle. Nick's been recovering from knee surgery, played very well last week against Chicago. Bandits have the ball at the Denver 40-yard line. The running backs are Greg Boone and Sam Platt. John Reeves, a veteran out of the University of Florida. The tight end, Gilbert in motion to the right. Up the middle for a short game that time is Greg Boone. Very good, uh, I think a very good play selection on the first play uh, coming out of the uh, box, especially with the idea that uh, with three running backs coming in, you think they're going to throw the ball, to come up with a little draw fake up the middle, and uh, Greg Boone uh, gets it off to a good start. Danny Bugs, the receiver at the bottom of your screen. At the top is Willie Gillespie. Now Gillespie comes in motion to the bottom. Reeves on a handoff to his fullback, Sam Platt. Platt for short yardage that time. Good pursuit. And as Rocky and I mentioned at the top of the show, this Denver Gold defense is number one in the league against the rush. They look fired up tonight. Laval Shorts in on the stop that time. The nose guard for the gold. Former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Short 
latest college football in Boulder at the University of Colorado. Not too far from here. Ball at the 32 yard line. It's third down and two. Gain of about five with a run by Platt. Once again, Willie Gillespie in motion. Platt trying to get around the right end. He'll have the first down and more. Down to the 25 yard line of the goal before he's stripped up. 